The world of marketing certainly is an odd one. As much as we'd like to believe it's all suits and martinis like in Mad Men, it's more about analyzing consumer metrics, managing e-commerce portfolios, and trying not to go absolutely insane from doing those two things. Still, that doesn't mean that promoting a product can't ever be fun. Sometimes the best way to make sure your promotional material reaches your target audience is to put it in a format that you know they'll engage with. This idea led to the birth of one of the weirdest phenomena ever to exist, the promotional video game. Yes, that's right, somewhere along the line, some executive decided the best way to advertise products was through the interactive medium of video games. And the results are almost always as weird and ridiculous as you'd think, because, well, they're video games designed specifically to sell people things. Maybe that's just what happens when product placement is considered more important than entertainment value. Just an idea. With that in mind, I'm Peter from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 weirdest promotional video games. Number 10. Nerf N Strike Elite. Back in the late 2000s, the good people at Nerf found themselves with a new line of plastic weapons to sell, and they made a choice to make those toys compatible with the Wii, and then create a video game to go along with it, all in the name of moving as many Nerf N-Strike Elite toys as possible. The name of that game? Well, it was Nerf and Strike Elite. What else would it be? The thing is, making a rail shooter for the Wii isn't actually all that weird. But there was just one small problem with this idea. Nerf did exactly the same thing just one year before. Bog standard rail shooters as a marketing ploy are one thing, but a second bog standard rail shooter released just a year after the first, that's borderline insulting. Just to make the whole idea even stranger, the game was made to be compatible with the Wii Zapper, meaning that the specific toy the game was designed to sell wasn't actually a prerequisite for playing it. On top of that, Nerf N Strike Elite tells a story in which the company's toys are seemingly used to actually kill, which is probably just a tad tone deaf. No matter how you look at it, Nerf N Strike Elite is much more misguided than any promotional game should be. Number 9. Cool Spot Oh, remember the 90s? Well, it was quite possibly the video game industry's most radical decade, giving players the likes of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Crazy Taxi, and Cool Spot? A platform game developed for the Mega Drive and the SNES, Cool Spot is named for its protagonist, an anthropomorphic red bottle cap wearing trainers and really sweet shades. He also just happened to be the mascot for the soft drink 7-Up. As much as the game features the titular mascot, it doesn't feel as though it was purely made to plug the soft drink and was actually received incredibly well, earning genuinely impressive review scores across the board. It's almost enough to make you forget it was created to help sell carbonated sugar drinks, at least until you beat the game, that is. Making it to the end of Cool Spot rewards the player with a screen that tells them they are eligible for the grand prize, although what exactly that entailed has seemingly been lost to time. The promise of an undisclosed prize seems to have been the entire purpose of Cool Spot, so looking back today, the game is retroactively shrouded in mystery. And maybe we're going out on a limb here, but that hardly seems like a sound marketing tactic. Number 8. Doritos Crash Course Doritos and video games are, in our opinion at least, a match made in heaven, and it would seem the company that make the corn snacks in question seem to think so too, because they sponsored their very own game for the Xbox 360 in 2010. Now, surely, if the good people at Doritos were so desperate to make a video game, they must have had a really unique idea, right? Wrong. Doritos Crash Course is a run-of-the-mill, side-scrolling platformer that seems to have been inspired by the game show Ninja Warrior. It's really hard to understand exactly what Doritos were going for with this one. Is all of the side-scrolling action supposed to give us a hankering for flavoured tortilla chips? It seems unlikely. Surely then it's a cut-and-dry case of blatant product placement. Well, no. Other than the occasional appearance of the Doritos logo, the game hardly plugs the product at all. 
all. As the game basically plays like the least interesting episode of Ninja Warrior, it seems particularly odd that Doritos didn't capitalise on the opportunity for product placement. Not only was the game mediocre, it fails to even sell Doritos to its players. In that sense, this one isn't just weird, it's an all-round failure on the part of the Doritos marketing team. Number 7. Chase the Chuck Wagon even far back in the distant past of 1983, people enjoyed the companionship of animals. Wait, what, really? Let me see, that's not true. Taking responsibility for such a critter, a pet, as they're sometimes known, means feeding them in order to keep them alive. The Purina Company specializes in selling this pet food, and throughout the 70s and 80s, they marketed their chuck wagon dog food with an ad that showed a dog chasing a tiny little wagon. Ah. Even though the video game industry was in its infancy back then, Purina decided that a promotional game would help sell more dog food, and thus Chase the Chuck Wagon, a maze game for the Atari 2600 that was only available by mail order after sending Purina proof of purchase, was born. In fairness, putting copies of the game inside the dog food probably wouldn't have worked. The player controls Chucky the dog, guiding him through a series of mazes in order to lead him to the Chuck Wagon waiting at the other end. The game itself might be somewhat unremarkable, but it's the overall premise that's really really the problem here. No matter how you look at it, releasing a tie-in game for a line of dog food that requires proof of purchase to even play seems absolutely barking mad. <laughs> Number 6. M&M's The Lost Formulas You know what's hard? Selling chocolate to children. At least we're assuming as much, because how else do you explain the existence of M&M's The Lost Formulas? A Crash Bandicoot-style platformer, The Lost Formulas, or The Lost Formulae if you want to get correct Latin pluralization about this, stars yellow and red anthropomorphic chocolates that serve as two of the brand's multicolored mascots. The game follows the pair as they try to reclaim the M&M's factory from a horde of robots who've also hidden the secret M&M formulas. As strange as it may be for M&M's to feature in a Crash Bandicoot ripoff, M&M's The Lost Formulas gets weirder, as it also features Math Mode, which tasks players with solving number problems. Apparently the best time for education is when surrounded by robots in the middle of a chocolate factory. The original game was released for PC in 2000, but it was later ported to the PlayStation under the name M&M's Shell Shocked, so not only did it shamelessly rip off a beloved video game franchise starring the un official PS1 mascot at the time, all in aid of promoting sales of chocolate under the pretense of teaching children, but it did so twice using two different names! If the skills we learned from the Lost Formula's math mode serve us correctly, all of that adds up to one of the weirdest and most irritating marketing maneuvers ever. Sorry, I'm just- I like Crash Bandicoot, that's all. Number 5. World Gone Sour a much sweeter addition to the utterly bonkers world of promotional video games is the 2011 title World Gone Sour, a game designed to help sell world-famous candy treat Sour Patch Kids. Ashton loves them. Developed by Capcom, that's the very same studio that was simultaneously making Resident Evil 6, World Gone Sour is a side-scrolling platformer that puts the player into the gelatin-based body of a green Sour Patch Kid, who embarks on a quest to get himself eaten. After being separated from his friend and then dropped before he could be ingested, Mr. Green sets off to earn himself a trip into someone's digestive tract. On the way, he meets corrupted Sour Patch Kids who have gone, quote, sour after being discarded. Aren't they supposed to be sour, though? I'm not sure they thought this through. The game itself combines an interesting visual style with pretty standard platforming gameplay, but honestly, it's the premise that makes World Gone Sour so bizarre. Controlling a sour candy as he fights against his own kind while obsessively pursuing his own gastronomical demise is more than just weird. It's actually down downright creepy, when you think about it. Number 4. Global Gladiators Having established itself as the world's largest fast food chain, McDonald's has dipped its proverbial toes into pretty much every industry there is. Naturally, this includes video games, with the chain's first title, MC Kids, released in 1992. 
However, where MC Kids was a pretty average platformer, the sequel, Global Gladiators, took things a little further. Trying to garner a reputation as the socially conscious fast food chain, McDonald's tasked Virgin Games with developing a platformer for the Mega Drive with a strong environmentalist message. The resultant game, Global Gladiators, features two playable characters, the imaginatively named Mick and Mac, who are guided by Ronald McDonald on a quest through four worlds – Slime World, Mystical Forest, Toxie Town, and Arctic World. The game largely consists of collecting golden arches and shooting enemies with gooey projectiles, for some reason. Regardless of how you feel about the inherent weirdness of platformers in the 90s, Global Gladiators can't help but stand out. Despite proudly owning its status as a promotional video game, it tried desperately to lean into the idea of environmentalism, distancing itself from the McDonald's brand and ultimately confusing its message. After all, shooting orange gunk at monsters has nothing to do with saving the planet or eating fast food, making Global Gladiators seem like a game that had no idea what it's supposed to be. Number 3. Citroen C4 Robot in the highly competitive automobile industry, there's only one surefire way to sell a car. Insinuate through promotional materials that it can do something it absolutely cannot. Usually, manufacturers will simply suggest their car will make you successful, rich, attractive, or a combination of the three. But Citroen went down a slightly different route for the C4, implying in its advertising that the car could turn into a giant dancing robot. In order to help prospective buyers better understand the vehicle, Citroen also released a promotional racing game for the C4. In it, players can take the car for a virtual test drive while competing to beat other players' record times. Seems pretty sensible, doesn't it? Well, actually, it isn't. While driving the C4, players will find it randomly transforms into the giant robot from the advert to slide along the hard shoulder in a display that's as unexpectedly hilarious as it is baffling. Though it was clearly a reference to the rhythmic robot antics of the C4 ads, it was a weird choice for a promotional racing game that otherwise seemed relatively serious. Now, I'm no lawyer, but I'm just going to pretend that the game definitely opened the door to a few false advertising lawsuits, and was therefore not the wisest move from Citroen, even if it was rather funny. Please, please someone tell me that a buyer actually tried to sue them because their car wouldn't become a transformer. It probably didn't happen, but I'd, I'd like to think it did. Number 2. Darkened Sky most promotional games feel as though they begin and end with the product they're designed to promote. But Darkened Sky is a different beast entirely. Released for PC and GameCube in 2002 and set in a vast fantasy world, the game opens with a woman named Sky waking in the forest of Linlora. Armed with her trusty staff, Skye sets off on a quest across the five worlds in search of her missing mother. Oh, and the game is also just one big advert for Skittles. Did you guess that? Despite the highly involved fantasy setting and surprisingly rich lore, it soon becomes clear that all of the world's magic stems from the power of fruit-flavored candies, and throughout her journey, Skye collects Skittles to power the magic in her staff, because apparently that makes perfect sense. Allegedly, Darkened Sky is the product of a 300-page script that was written at the behest of the Mars Company after they asked for a game to promote Skittles, which is maybe just a little beyond the average effort put into a promotional tie-in. Despite receiving mixed reviews, Darkened Sky deserves to be remembered as the game with lofty ambitions that seemed to forget it was created with the express purpose of selling processed sugar. And number one, Sneak King. Of course it is. When it comes to promotional video games, the Burger King brand is sort of, well, the king. After their mascot made an appearance in Fight Night Round 3, the company decided to develop their own games. But of these three decidedly weird titles, one in particular stands out as the strangest. Sneak King, a stealth game that appears to have been based entirely on an awful pun. Released in 2006 for the Xbox on the Xbox 360, Sneak King puts players in control of the king himself as he skulks around various locations delivering lunches. 
NPC characters express hunger through thought bubbles, and the king must sneak food to them. If he's spotted, they lose their appetite, which might be something to do with the fact that the mascot is literally the stuff of nightmares. Sneak King may be utterly bonkers, but it reportedly paid off in a big way for Burger King, who reported a <laughs> whopper of a 40% increase in profits after its release. Also, due to the fact that the games were sold alongside Burger King's value meals, they ranked among 2006's best-selling titles of the year, which is honestly one of the most ridiculous things to ever happen to the video games industry. But hey, bestseller or not, Sneak King remains an incredibly strange and off-putting game by pretty much every imaginable metric, and the number one spot couldn't go to anybody else. Well done, your majesty.